The plasma membrane, which can also be called the cell membrane, is a security guard to the best club in town, the cell. The cell is filled with the best drinks, the best music, and the most fun people you will ever meet. And everybody who is anybody wants in. However, only certain people or substances get to participate in the fun. The cell is a big bubble and stationed along every inch of the perimeter of the bubble, arms crossed and presence known is the security guard or cell membrane. He blocks harmful things from entering that bubble, but allows other things through with a wave of his hand as if they are on the VIP guest list. The cell membrane is made of a phospholipid bilayer. It allows things in and out at will, but only based on what is the best interest of the cell. Each phospholipid in the cell membrane has a head and a tail. The head is made of a phosphatidylcholine group and is polar or hydrophilic, which means that this part loves water. The tail is made of fatty acids and is nonpolar or hydrophobic, which means that it hates water. The cell membrane also contains cholesterol and proteins. Cholesterol is another lipid composed of four fused carbon rings and is found alongside phospholipids in the core of the membrane. Proteins have a lot of jobs including catalyzing reactions and selectively transporting substances across the membrane. They also attach to the cytoskeleton to provide strength and structure to the cell. Now this bubble is not very secure. In fact, the plasma membrane is fluid, much like the consistency of olive oil. Well, that is not much of a reassuring fact. One would hope that the security of cells was left up to something a little more, well, powerful. But rest assured, this olive oil is well suited for the job and is diligent about deciding what is allowed in and out. It protects the cell just fine. In fact, plasma membranes must be very flexible in order to allow certain cells, such as red blood cells and white blood cells, to change shape as they pass through narrow capillaries. So the olive oil consistency is just perfect. Cells need to be able to take in and excrete or get rid of things in small but very specific amounts. They also need to be able to chat with other cells in their general vicinity about what they have done and how they need support from their peers. Basically, the security guard of the best club in town uses his walkie-talkie to discuss the situation with neighboring guards to work together as a team to keep their neighborhood of clubs safe and healthy. If someone or something manages to damage a wall of that bubble, the whole thing dies. There is no more bubble to protect, the club shuts down permanently, and the security guard needs to polish up his resume and look for a new job. Once the security guard decides to invite something into the cell, it enters in one of two ways. Passive, which occurs without the input of cellular energy, or as we like to call it, the couch potato model. Another way is active, which is a transport that requires the cell to expend energy, or the gym rat who never stops moving. Passive transport is when things flow from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration, requiring no energy and making life easy. It's like pushing a rock down a flight of stairs. Now, active transport goes against the concentration variant and requires energy. It's a lot more work to push that rock up the stairs than it would be to push it down, right? But in some cases, the rock needs to come upstairs, so energy must be used to get the job done. Osmosis and diffusion are constantly occurring. Gases such as oxygen or carbon dioxide and other small molecules and ions are being transported across the cell membrane. They are examples of passive transport. There are three main ways into this trendy club we call the cell by active transport. You can enter by pinocytosis, phagocytosis, 
or receptor-mediated endocytosis. Pinocytosis is a type of transport where small particles suspended in the fluid outside the cell are brought into the cell through an inward folding of the cell membrane, resulting in a suspension of the particles within a small vesicle inside the cell. Like if the cell is drinking. Unlike you and me, the cell's beverage of choice is water-soluble molecules, which are small molecules. Phagocytosis is the process by which a cell uses its plasma membrane to engulf a large particle, giving rise to an internal compartment called the phagosome. It's like the cell eating a meal. It isn't a burger and fries type of meal though, more like cell parts and debris or white blood cells to engulf bacteria, for example. Now, receptor-mediated endocytosis is a process where amounts of specific molecules can be brought into a cell after binding to receptors found in the cell's surface. The molecules bound to these receptors are taken into the cell through inward budding of the cell surface membrane, which turns into a vesicle within the cell. What happens when bigger molecules need to leave the cell? Then you have exocytosis, which is how things leave the cell, and there are two ways to get out of the cell after last call. Simple exocytosis is when a vesicle forms around the substance the cell wants out, it moves towards the cell membrane and fuses with it so it releases it out. It's the patron who had too much to drink and the bartender cuts him off, ushers him to the door and he kind of sticks there until the door opens and he gets perched out onto the street. Sometimes things enter the cell that are not good for it. The herpes simplex virus enters by phagocytosis. The cell is hungry and orders what they think is a veggie burger, but it's really a beef burger in disguise. Smallpox, respiratory viruses, and the human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, all enter through pinocytosis. Hepatitis C and COVID-19 enter through receptor-mediated endocytosis. Among the most sophisticated functions of the plasma membrane is its ability to transmit signals via complex proteins. These proteins can be receptors, which work as receivers of things going on outside the cell, and act as activators of intracellular processes or markers, which allow cells to recognize each other. Membrane receptors provide extracellular attachment sites for effectors like hormones and growth factors, which then trigger intracellular responses. Some viruses, such as HIV, can hijack mm. these receptors, forcing their way into the cell, causing infection. Things like viruses are tricky and make their way into cells by exploiting the way the cell brings the necessary equipment it needs to survive. Viruses put on a disguise to look like one of the people on the VIP list, but once they gain entry, they remove their disguise and wreak havoc on the cell. Now, have you ever wondered why people are more susceptible to contracting certain illnesses? It often has to do how this illness enters the cells and which receptors invite them in. For example, the well-known and quite hated COVID-19 attaches to the ACE2 receptor, which is found all over the body. Diabetics have a lot more ACE2 receptors, therefore have a much higher chance of getting COVID-19 in their cells. To sum up, the security guard of the cell has a very big job. If he is well-trained and good at his job, he focuses and doesn't get distracted by the alerts on his cell phone or the cute security guard at the club next door, and the cell has a much better chance of staying healthy, happy, and prosperous.
Now that was it for a quick introduction to the plasma membrane. Like this video if you would like to see more videos similar to this one and subscribe. Turn on the notifications by clicking on the bell so you don't miss out on anything. Thank you again for watching and I will see you next time.